Hi, Scottish Mud Larkin here with Nicole and Craig. We've come back along to Leaven because one of the things that you saw us find on the 15th of January was really special. If you remember that episode, that was when Nicole showed you a little lump of uh, a ceramic object. She kind of tidied it off and said we we're going to come back to that and look at it later. If you're wondering what that little piece of ceramic was, it was actually the torso of a frozen Charlotte. Now we're not going to go through the whole um, poem of the Frozen Charlottes again. If you're interested in hearing that, then do check out the video that Nicola White did and the video that Kit and Caboodlers did because they covered that. But we're going to look at some other interesting aspects of Frozen Charlottes. very shiny on this side but it looks as if it has a letter so I'm going to take that along and we'll have a wee look at that That's fine! What's that? Oh it's, it's a milk glass! Yeah yeah it's a partial uh, little uh, tub of milk glass. Yeah, you think that might be the top of the piece you find the other <laughs> week? No, I think it's the side of a larger one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's very nice. I love yeah. milk glass. <laughs> I found a wee piece of glass. I'm just going to oh. pass you it just now. Now, the only thing of interest that I can see about it is it has a letter on it. Oh. But the letter looks as if it's on the inside, which is kind of odd. All oh, right. Ah. It's a, is it a T or a Y? I, I think it's this way around, so it is on the outside and it's just the, the bent bottom of a bottle Yeah. and the letter is here. Yeah, is that a, a big air bubble in there as well? Ooh, it's, it's difficult to see. It's very, very lovely frosted. Uh, yeah, I don't know, I can't really make out what it is. It could be, oh yeah, if I hold it the other way around, it's an L yeah. for the <laughs> okay, let's take that home. We'll have a wee closer look at that now. Yeah. Cool. It's really interesting. The last time we were here, this was much, much, much more covered in pebbles and rocks and old bricks. Today, there must have been a very strong current through here. It's cleared all that away. And instead, we find a lot of sand. In typical fashion, I was just off to go and uh, film some stuff. And Nicole shouted, Blue! <laughs> Yeah. That's cool. Oh, it's a really nice piece as well. Yeah, it looks nice. Hard to tell if it's uh, frosted or shiny or wet. Yeah, maybe a combination. <laughs> hmm. It looks quite shiny, but you know, we always take blue. that's nice it looks quite dirty but we do find it's, it's really thick very heavy piece of glass get a sense how thick that is now I can't see it looks like there may be an air bubble around there I think we'll take that along and have a closer look That's really nice. You can see the warped contours inside there. So let's go have a look at that jar that Nicole's found and I'll show her this piece as well. So you found that big piece of jar? Yeah, big piece of jar. Also found this really frosted uh, bottle bottom. I think it's probably maybe from a Bovril bottle. Oh yeah. Got a couple of numbers on it, it's brown. If people aren't sure what Bovril is, uh, it's a kind of, uh, is it a, I can't remember if Bovril's the actual beef act extract or if it's the <laughs> yeast extract, can you? <laughs> I think it's the beef extract, it's a beef, yeah, okay, yeah, so it makes Bovril, a broth. <laughs> yeah, Bovril, take a spoonful of that, mix it in with some boiling <laughs> water and have a hot meaty drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that looks like that, it does. a big jar piece. Yeah, very big. I think we'll, we'll leave these pieces here, but they are very nice uh, just to see what kind of things we can find here. Yeah. Oh. So we plane. That 
no name on this brick either, at least not one that I can see. No, nope, the other side's just as bad. But I have just seen this wee piece of pottery. Really nice wee piece of blue pottery, yeah? And we find quite a lot of these on this shore. Large bottle bottoms. I think that's a bit large for us to do much with. And it's quite shiny as well, so we'll take that lovely wee piece of blue pottery there and leave that to weather a little more in the water. It's quite the most artistic looking uh, abandoned shopping trolley I've ever seen. Tip Nicole's just uh, giving me a shout, say she's found a few pieces. Yeah. Anything interesting there? I've found ah, it's okay. a little breadcrumb trail. So there's a turquoise piece over here. Let's see if we can follow that yeah. breadcrumb trail. Uh -huh. Now, I think this turquoise piece that you're about to see, this one, is the first piece Nicole's seen on the breadcrumb trail. Uh -huh. But I think she's missed this tiniest, oh. tiniest, <laughs> tiniest pieces of blue there. I have, yeah. So, <laughs> Okay, let's pick these up and follow the trail. I'll take this tiny blue. We've got this piece here. Oh, that is a nice colour. That is stunning. That really is nice. A gorgeous colour, isn't it? Yeah, that's very, very turquoisey. That is nice. That's going to make a pendant. <laughs> okay, let's have a look you know at the rest it. of this breadcrumb trail. Yeah, this piece is very nice. I don't know if, well, we'll be able to see the scale of that when Nicole picks that up. Yeah, it's very big. Oh, it looks like a bottle bottom. Really? Yeah, it's, it's ever so slightly raised on this side here. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Let's go over and find the blue piece. Okay. Now, do you want me to try and find that, or do you want to show me where it is? <laughs> I'll try and remember where it was. Okay, let's go see if we can find it. There we go. That's lovely. That's an it's got an interesting shape to it as well. Yeah. Maybe let's uncover that and have a look and see what it could be. Oh, do you know what I think that is? Mm -hmm. I think that's the top of a Vicks jar. <laughs> yeah, that's what I think. It's very nice, very blue. Uh, looks quite well frosted. We'll have to check that. That is a beautiful cobalt blue, isn't it? Yes, yeah, really, really nice. lovely. Yeah, yeah. Ah, now I just sat down here. I found two things that might interest you. So I was just trying. <laughs> I don't know why I was filming that particular rock. It looks like a seagull's uh, visited it a little earlier <laughs> on. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. But just luckily that I sat here because I just saw this which looks to me like it's a piece of Victoria dripping jar. Would you say that was maybe a piece of Victoria dripping jar? Yeah, yeah, I think so. That's yeah. very cool. That's very nice, yeah. So we'll take that along, yeah? Mm hmm But I also saw a really nice piece of uh, what looks like privacy glass just beside it. Ah, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. And this really nice. It's very contoured here. Really thick piece. Yeah, yeah, you know, this nice. piece has some bubbles in it. It has the lines there. I wonder if that's part of a washboard, an old washboard. What do you ah, think? Ah, no, it's no. too fine. Yeah, no. I've got a piece of washboard somewhere, and the washboard has lines that are almost as thick as my pinky, right. and one next to one another. So we'll, we'll have okay. to have a look at that. But yeah, there were glass washboards. There were uh, indeed. My gran used to have one. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. But that's quite a nice piece, right? You see the bubbles uh -huh. in that. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, yeah, we can use that for something maybe, yeah? Now that's really cool. This looks like a, wow, it looks like a really rounded bottle or vase or I'm not sure what that was, but it must have been quite large. That's really cool. Oh, hang on. Nicole's just found something really cool as well. I'm going to take this along. It has some writing, but I want to go and see what Nicole's just found. Bucket list. 
<laughs> okay, Nicole's doing the Snoopy dance, folks. It must be good. Can you see it? Let's find it again. I've just seen it, so, but I'm going to do a little scan mm -hmm. just so that everybody has a chance to see if you can see it. Interesting brick there, it's not that. Uh -huh. Nope, it's not that. I reckon this will be seen very, very easily mm -hmm. by most discerning yeah. eyes. I did circle this area about three times. So. Now I've gone over it, but in case you missed it, Ooh. it's this glass stopper. It's a really lovely glass stopper as well. That's a beauty. Oh, look at it. this hole. Oh, so it's got a little dent here. What a cutie! That's really cool. <laughs> Absolutely love finding these little stoppers. They are, they are like the three things I love to find, as you know. Beads, marble stoppers. This is a stopper. And this is the best stopper to find, is it? Yeah, it is. That's the one that makes you happiest. <laughs> yeah, don't tell the vulcanite stoppers. They make me happy too, but this is like, yeah, the epitome of a stopper. <laughs> Excellent, that's really awesome. Yeah. Now, I found this really <laughs> remarkably less interesting piece, but it's quite oh. odd given the shape oh, of right. that. Well, that's very see, big. It must have been really big. Mm. Kind of yeah. Globe shape yeah, well I'm guessing. Thing, right? Yeah, I'm guessing it was a bowl about this size, yeah. maybe. Yeah, that's big. It looks like it might mm -hmm. have actually been a bottle. There's markings on the bottom ah. of it that suggest it was a bottle. All right. But I don't know what kind of bottle that. Could. That could have been mm. a chemical bottle. We've seen some oh, large right. chemical bottles in Vanuatu. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, these really, really, they were huge like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that could have been. used for carrying acids by the American mm -hmm. ships. Now we know that a lot of chemicals were mm -hmm. used in the power plant behind us. So who knows? Oh, that's a good thought, yeah. Mm, really a nice piece. Cool, yeah. Uh -huh. Doesn't beat the bottle stopper, but I don't know. It's a bit different. It's very different. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> okay, we should move here because uh, you probably noticed yeah. behind uh, Nicole, the, uh, the water's getting closer and closer and closer in. Yep. bits of glass like this look like they've got internal breaks so we'll leave that there's a really cute wee nugget of glass there really like wee bits like that but I've just seen something really a little bit special and it's this decorative glass here that's really lovely really nice to find wee pieces like that just seen a wee nice cute piece of pottery with some blue lines. It's quite classic style. That's really cute. It's a little bit bigger than I thought it was as well. Oh wow, that's really nice. That is such a nice piece of bottle. Oh, is it? <laughs> It's odd shaped. It's actually concave here and concave there. I think this is the base. You can see the rim. Take that along though, that's very cool. Quite a lot of large pieces of ceramic here. Oh, that is much larger than I thought. There's some motifs left there. So this must have been a large plate or a large bowl. But you can see from looking underneath just how large this bowl must have been. Or perhaps, as I say, it was a plate. Finding some interesting glass shapes today. This one again, like that large bowl, I'm not sure what this could have been. It could even be something like a milk bottle, but I don't think it is. Take this out and look at it here. Very shiny on the inside. Nice and frosty on the outside. So I've just asked Nicole to come across to have a wee look at some uh, 
these glass bottle bottoms that I just showed you. Sorry, I haven't pointed them out to Nicole yet. <laughs> She's scanning the ground for them though. But yeah, they're down here. All right. It's a nice wee collection. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't think we'll take them. They're too big, but they're quite interesting. Some of them are quite old. And that one that's uh, furthest to your left, this one, yeah. All that right. has an interesting contour on it. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a twist. Yeah. I think it maybe probably went this way, maybe. I don't know. Maybe from an iron brew bottle? You think? Well, I don't, I'm not sure what they looked like. Is this the top? Could be anything. Yeah, it could be a barge uh -huh. bottle, actually, yeah. yeah. That's an interesting uh -huh. wee piece, isn't it? It's very shiny on one uh -huh. side, but it has some really nice sea marks on the other. Yeah. So shiny on the inside, though. Yeah, it? yeah. Yeah, that's strange. It probably was, like, uh, the neck of a bottle, and then it broke, yeah. you know, maybe a couple of years ago, and that's why that's not frosted yet. Yeah. And then you find this. Oh, that's very nice. Yeah, they're, good, they're quite nicely tinted. Now, I think a lot mm -hmm. of it has to do with their uh, dirt. I think <laughs> these are... Algae. Yeah, I think these two are clear. Yeah, but and there's that, some... Uh, I think there's some air bubbles in this one as well, isn't there? Yeah, they are in this kind of area, yeah. and maybe there, by the looks of it. Yeah, that's really nice. It's a nice wee collection. Yeah. So I found a few pieces over by the water. Uh, let's have a look at them. Okay, now there's this one. This is the uh, top of a bottle and you can just make out DY plus Distur. So yeah. I'm guessing it might have been Kokodi plus, I don't know if that's district or distributor. Or distillery? Mm, don't know, that looks dis. Yeah, it's difficult to see. Yeah. <laughs> really partial. But yeah, I thought that was an interesting piece to show. Yeah. And Always good to see some writing on pieces. Yeah, Gives yeah. Gives an indication of what they were, where they came from. Yeah, it really is. And these are really, really heavily oh, sea marked. Wow, yeah. Now this one I think is interesting. I think it's the bottom of a torpedo bottle. Oh yeah. And you see this really, really smooth bit here. So if you're not sure what a torpedo bottle is, do check out our uh, video on aerated water. Now that was a uh, oh. I'll maybe have to post a wee note of where that video was on this uh, slide, so yeah, look out for that. Yeah, yeah, that's a really interesting to know. And very this heavy. One, yeah, it's, it's, it's very heavy and it's really, really sea marked. And so is this piece. And this looks to be uh, the bottom of a, a utility bottle, but you see it's really thick. See, very heavy, yeah. Thick, just like my finger. And that's really nicely frosted as well. A couple of wee bits of pottery there too. Yeah, yeah, I thought this one was really nice. It looked like it has a, maybe like a jellyfish on it. And this one I thought was quirky because it says bye bye. <laughs> Without any. <laughs> so what have you got? Do you know how you see birds of a feather fly together or flop yeah. together? <laughs> this is a... Oh wow, yeah. Like this little area. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to scan around that for Fox. Yeah, yeah. So. Just this little area here, you can see a nice piece of blue there underneath that mm -hmm. stone. We move just a little further over from that. Yep. There's another really nice piece of blue. Yeah. That's awesome, just seeing these all together. But yeah, that's really nice. Nice piece of privacy glass there as well. Yeah. That's now, what I haven't told Nicole yet is mm -hmm. that I have a piece in my pocket. Oh. <laughs> a piece of privacy <laughs> glass in my pocket. You do? So that's that piece of privacy glass I've been carrying around. Aww. What do you think? That is really lovely, it's yeah. It's a nice bit, isn't it? I think it's the same pattern, and what I always think it looks like it's flowers. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice, like um, dandelions. Or... Yeah, and the pottery is really nice too. It's a nice wee piece of pottery, that, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Now, what do you make of that piece on the right there? It's very heavy. Oh. looks like the bottom of a bottle, but it's weirdly kind of convex, or sorry, rather concave, Yeah. on two sides. Now, I think that's the bottom. This is the bottom, I think. Yeah, and this yeah, yeah. is maybe where the label went. They did have oh, paper okay. labels on there. So there's sometimes there's like a, a straight side so that the label could be applied. Right. That's okay. maybe what it is. <laughs> That's, That's really, really nice. Yeah, we're doing really well. There's lots of blue today. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we best get moving now. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get cut off. Well, I don't think we'll get cut off exactly, but uh, we might get wet feet. Yeah. One then. Let's see what it could be. Ah, I can see what it is already. Yeah. It's a really 
nice piece of spongeware. Yeah, lovely piece of Scottish spongeware. And uh, when I said wow, it was because it's unusual to find that on this beach. Very clear as well. Yeah, and it's very big. I think it's probably been a cup or a little bowl. That's a lovely piece of spongeware and if you want to know more about spongeware and transferware and how it was made, check out our video on the history of Scottish spongeware. So I was basically heading over to this bridge to take a little bit of footage of the birds on the other side and I'm just past this which is quite, a, quite an awesome, unusual piece of blue glass mm, It's got a shiny nice. bit but it's very unusual I'm just going to pass this to Nicole What do you make of that? That's really unusual right? Yeah, it's just really like a kind of baby blue, it's really nice uh, Looks like a, well like a bottom of a jar uh, don't know, we always find bottom of jars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a really nice colour. Uh, it's really organically shaped. <laughs> yeah, so it's got a wee bit shiny. Yeah, um, yeah, you can just see it on the side there. And this and looks like there, it's yeah. going to kind of chip off maybe. It's a surface yeah. crack. But you can get some idea of the yeah. shape of this piece. Yeah, and the size. Yeah, it's really quite a large piece. Mm -hmm. Certainly is. I don't think we'll take it though. Too much shiny on this left side there. Yeah, we'll leave it here for another 20 years and then we can come back and uh, collect it when it's really frosted. <laughs> yeah, there's something to look forward to, folks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 20 years <laughs> 20 time. years down the line. Oh, <laughs> see if I can crawl along this shore uh -huh. then. Now, do you want to see what I just found? Yeah, sure. Let's have a look. Oh, wow, that's a really nice piece <laughs> of glue, isn't it? It is, yeah. It looks like it's got some crazing on it. Okay, so I think you're going to need to say what crazing is, but now that I'm looking at this quite closely, I think I, I think I know. Is it that zigzaggedy kind of crack, cracking that's going on in the glass there? Yeah, yeah, it's like a kind of surface uh, deterioration right. uh, cracking. So yeah, this you see, it looks like the surface is, but it's starting to erode there. Basically, it's a really pretty pattern. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Very nice piece. Cool. Okay, dogs. So that was the last find of the day and we did really well today and now we're gonna go home and we'll have a look at the frozen channel that we found the last time and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. The last time we were in Leven we found this really really intriguing piece of clay and you maybe remember me just pushing it aside and telling you that I was going to tell you more about it in a different video which is now. Uh, so I'll show you what it actually was that we found and as you can maybe just about tell is this is a part of a frozen charlotte. Now this is the front part you can only just make out uh, there's two lines here on the chest and if you turn it around this is how I actually found that it was a frozen child and not just a piece of clay is that there's a little bun there and the little, the little cheeks there what you can also see is that this was originally a, 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 a jointed frozen child so this is where the arms would have been and this little little indentation here. Now the entire body and including the head would have been one piece and then you only had the arms attached to this. This is a really great find. 
Now I'm really fascinated with uh, frozen chalet pieces and any kind of doll parts. They have a little bit of a kind of creepy element if you display them. I don't know why I find them fascinating. It might be that there is a connection to children having played with them about 150 years ago and there's something just really kind of very nice and kind of it almost connects you to the past in these little doll parts. So yeah, I do really love them and I have to say that I was really chuffed when I found this little piece with a tiny bum. Five facts about frozen charlottes that you may or may not have known. Now fact one, there's a charlotte and there's also a charlie. But who's to say if you found a piece of a charlie or a charlotte? I've noticed that uh, some of the Charlies um, that you can see now that were sold have this uh, little kind of thumbs up gesture and they tend to stand a little bit more uh, with kind of broader legs and they overall seem to be a bit more muscular. Fact two. Now there's frozen Charlottes and there's also Cupid dolls. Now what is a Cupid doll? Cupid dolls were uh, actually uh, an invention by the illustrator Rose O'Neill and uh, she designed uh, comic strips in 1909. So the name actually derives from uh, the term Cupid and these little uh, dolls that she had in her illustrations had little wings and cutesy little faces and googly eyes. The production of the Cupid dolls was eventually moved from Germany to France, then to Belgium, the US and uh, then to Japan. Yeah, and that's your uh, Cupid doll fact. So maybe this might have been a Cupid doll. Let us know if you ever found a Cupid doll in the comments and send us a picture. Fact 3. When was the term Frozen Charlotte actually coined? Well, the poem came out in uh, the 1840s, but the dolls that were produced were really referred to as penny dolls. And it wasn't until the uh, 1930s, roughly, when doll collectors and journalists started referring to unjointed little dolls as uh, frozen charlottes and that's where the term uh, frozen charlotte came from. Fact 4. What is a frozen charlotte? Well, nowadays every doll piece that we find is referred to as a frozen charlotte. Now fact 5. We all know that frozen charlotte froze to death but where did it happen? Classically, Frozen Charlotte freezes to death while travelling by carriage to a ball, but in one story in particular, she doesn't even make it out of the house. And Craig will tell you a little bit more about that and the original source for the story of Frozen Charlotte. Between 1830 and 1837, Samuel Warren wrote a collection of short stories that were largely focused on the human condition and experiences of death, and it's a pretty morbid collection. These stories were first published in serialised form in a Scottish periodical called Blackwood's Edinburgh Magazine. The magazine presented a monthly collection of diverse literary works and, as we shall see shortly, it provided a platform for some very conservative opinions to be printed. As such, the magazine was not without its controversies. Warren's stories proved popular enough to merit their collective publication in a book called Passages from a Diary of a Late Physician. It was a very popular book in its day. In fact, it was so popular that it was reprinted numerous times and in various translations. Warren was a learned man. During his time at the University of Edinburgh, he trained in medicine for six years before abandoning medicine for law. It is his training as a physician that's important here though, as it seems to have given him a wealth of source material to draw on for the stories that he would later write for Blackwood's Edinburgh magazine. We first meet the tragic character Charlotte in Warren's story Death at the Toilet. We meet Charlotte in the opening sentences, where her mother is pleading with her not to attend a ball being held by Mrs P. Charlotte a sickly, unmarried 26-year-old who we are told suffers from liver and heart problems is defiant in her insistence that she will go to the ball with the aim of meeting a potential suitor that she calls Lieutenant N. 
Leaving her mother perplexed, Charlotte sings, Oh, she shall dance all dressed in white so ladylike, as she disappears up the stairs to ready herself for the ball. As the hours pass, her mother wonders why she's taking so much longer than usual to get ready. After 45 more minutes of silence, Charlotte's mother calls the maid and asks her to check on her daughter. When Betty the maid enters Charlotte's room, she finds her sitting in front of her mirror, dressed in white, wearing her jewellery and her makeup. But the breath of life is gone from her, as she sits as if staring at her own image in the mirror. Placing his voice as narrator, Warren wastes no time in condemning Charlotte's vanity and her defiance. He writes, On examination of the body, we found that death had been occasioned by a disease of the heart. Her life might have been protracted, possibly for years, had she but taken my advice and that of her mother. I have seen many hundreds of corpses, as well in the calm composure of natural death, as mangled and distorted by violence, but never have I seen so startling a satire upon human vanity, so repulsive, unsightly and loathsome a spectacle as a corpse dressed for a ball. Two years after Warren's collected stories were published, the New York Observer printed a story inspired by Warren's Charlotte, and this is where Charlotte first freezes to death whilst travelling to the ball. One year later, Elizabeth Oak Smiths authored the poem Fair Charlotte, is also known as a corpse going to a ball. Smith's telling lacks Warren's condemnation, and the Charlotte we find is also very different. While Warren describes Charlotte in extremely unfavourable terms as corrupt, vain, and to add insult to injury, as ugly too, Smith describes a beautiful woman who is agreeable, loved and betrothed. Although vanity ends both Charlottes, Warren's condemning story leaves little room for the compassion or tragic romance that fills Smith's poem. It's not very surprising then that Smith's poem, and not Warren's original work, provides the backstory for these amazing and wonderful wee dolls we love to find and treasure nowadays. Thanks again to everyone for uh, watching the videos, for liking the videos and for commenting on our videos. Uh, thanks also to everybody for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Huge thanks also to everybody for visiting our Etsy shop and for helping us out through Kofi. Thank you so much. Thank you.